Okay, so this is a very fucking high yield question for US Samili, probably with a three quarters tilt toward 2CK, although high yield for step one as well, knowing that the diagnosis is neutropenic fever, all right, aka febrile neutropenia. You can see that we have a patient who's undergoing chemotherapy and has an ulceration in the oral cavity. Mouth ulcers, this is mucositis, all right? Mucositis is probably two-thirds of the time how neutropenia presents on USMLE. Neutropenia and agranulocytosis are the same thing, okay? Your granulocytes of myeloid origin, uh, they comprise neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils primarily. So if you hear the term agranulocytosis, neutropenia, they're the same thing, okay? So I gave you mouth ulcers here. As I said, this is the highest yield presentation. If the US Milli doesn't give you mouth ulcers, they might tell you there's a sore throat and a fever and someone undergoing chemotherapy, or they'll show you the white blood cell count and just tell you it's low, and you need to infer, well, the patient's undergoing chemo and has a low white blood cell count, that must mean there's agranulocytosis, okay? So there's a few routes to get there, but once again, the mouth ulcers, the mucositis, exceedingly high yield. Your normal range for white blood cells, four to 11,000 per microliter. So if they were to give you EG 3,500 in this setting, even if they don't mention mouth ulcers, you would need to infer that that's neutropenia, okay? So uh, the answer is always going to be uh, immediate IV broad spectrum antibiotics. So we have uh, choice C broad spectrum antibiotics as our answer here. Now, the US Simile is not going to obsess over exactly which antibiotics you need to use, all right? They're not so pedantic that way in the fashion that QBank is, okay? We tend to obsess over minutia, but US Simile tends to be pretty broad. Uh, I would say the most uh, the most specific I've really seen it on 2CK level NBMEs is they'll give you a big vignette where a patient needs broad spectrum antibiotics, and they'll say in the last line, uh, cefepime is commenced, which is a fourth generation cephalosporin. Uh, what drug needs to be added now? And the answer is vancomycin. So when we consider broad spectrum antibiotics, that refers to covering MRSA and pseudomonas which are nosocomial organisms and high-risk organisms such as associated with like MRSA, of course, with IV drug use, et cetera. But uh, covering MRSA and pseudomonas in addition to just community organisms. So it's usually vancomycin plus an upper-generation cephalosporin. Uh, so a third generation such as ceftriaxone, fourth generation such as cefepime. Once again, the exact combination doesn't matter for step. Piptaz, piperacillin, tazobactam, also a favorite choice in hospital, and uh, the carbapenems, like meropenem, okay? So, uh, and also aminoglycosides can be used for pseudomonas, such as tobramycin or amikacin. So you can add an aminoglycoside to vancomycin. But once again, for USMLE, they'll stay pretty broad. So, uh, IV antibiotics and setting a neutropenic fever, that's going to be our answer almost always. When might it not be our answer? Only if they give you low blood pressure and tell you that fluids have not yet been given because you need to address ABCs first, always. So I gave normal blood pressure here. So it's simply just you give antibiotics, not the fluids. If they gave you low blood pressure, didn't say anything else, just same vignette, but I gave you like 80 on 40 instead. The answer needs to be, you're going to give a bolus of saline first, then you'd give the antibiotics. In truth, in real life, you could probably just fucking load the antibiotics into the saline, right? But it's always ABCs, all right? So you give saline first if you have low blood pressure. And on the USMLE, what they'll often do, if they were to give you low blood pressure, they'll tell you that fluids have already been given. So they'll say like IV saline is administered, what's the next best step in management? And it's broad spectrum antibiotics. So your kind of your take home point is for neutropenic fever, for neutropenic fever, febrile neutropenia, IV, immediate IV broad spectrum antibiotics, almost always gonna be your answer. And if it's not your answer, it's only going to be because the patient is low blood pressure and uh, has not yet been given fluids and you need to address ABCs first, all right? So 
bolus of corticosteroids is just a distractor here. You could be like, hmm, not really sure what's going on. Is this autoimmune? Like something like that? It's not. I mean, if we had bolus pemphigoid, pemphigus vulgaris, uh, we can use steroids in those settings. Uh, there's, there's variation of the treatment, such as are you going to do plasmapheresis for antibodies for steroids, but this isn't autoimmune, okay? This is uh, from the chemotherapy in the setting neutropenia. You might say, but Michael, uh, why is there mucositis? Like, why do we specifically get mouth ulcers when there's agranulocytosis? No fucking idea, okay? But it's how it presents. Now, looking at some of the other answer choices, choice D is actually high yield. GMCSF, granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor, or mal stim, that's an example of this agent. Uh, interleukin-3 plays the role of stimulating endogenous uh, GMCSF-like function, okay? So, but GMCSF, I say, is high yield, not just to be aware that this is going to increase your granulocytes and, of course, your macrophages as well, but um, this is the answer after uh, broad-spectrum antibiotics have been given and the patient's neutrophils are still low. I've never seen granulocyte transfusion as an answer on any NVMe material, but I have seen GMCSF as an answer for next best step, where the NVMe question was literally to the effect of the patient has febrile neutropenia, broad-spectrum antibiotics have been administered, uh, what should be given next to improve this patient's hematologic profile? And the answer is just uh, GMCSF, okay? That's what I've seen on NBME material. Now, choice E, distractor, reassurance about side effects of chemotherapy. This is a medical emergency, okay? So this can also, neutropenic fever, we can see this in the setting of aplastic anemia. Classically, that's the other vignette where they can give you, e.g., a 12-year-old who's had parvovirus B19 infection, gets a plastic anemia, where you have your low platelets, low RBCs and WBCs, all your cell lines are low, and there's a fever, and you're like, well, that's neutropenic fever. It's a plastic anemia, but there's still neutropenic fever because the neutrophils are low and the patient has a fever. So we give immediate IV broad-spectrum antibiotics, okay? Systemic lupus erythematosus we can get autoantibodies against hematologic cell lines. This is really fucking high yield. Now in lupus, thrombocytopenia isolated. Isolated thrombocytopenia is common due to antiplatelet antibodies, but you can also get antibodies against RBCs and WBCs. And I've seen uh, an SLE question where uh, they show you all the cell lines are down. The wrong answer is decreased bone marrow production. That's aplastic anemia. The correct answer is increased peripheral destruction which refers to antibodies against your cell lines. And if the patient had a fever, you'd say, well, that's febrile neutropenia. We have to give broad spectrum antibiotics, okay? So that's your short summary for this question. Uh, very fucking high yield, as I mentioned. You need to walk away knowing neutropenic fever, uh, knowing that mucositis is how it often presents, and knowing that broad spectrum antibiotics are the next best step in management always, almost always. All right? That's it.